Welcome back to an exciting video. And what we're talking about today is getting rid of that incredibly irritating fret buzz at the first fret. That is correct. I've done videos and y'all have seen where I have done videos on setting up, um, yeah, there's my mic, on setting up uh, guitars, you know, and all kinds of good stuff like that. And I've talked several times about shimming down your nut boop, 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 on your guitar because a lot of times when you buy guitars, when you're buying, I'm going to say under that $2,000 price point, a lot of times the nuts will be too high on the guitar and it just kind of seems like it's a thing they do now it's easier for them to set the nut too high and have you deal with it as opposed to set it too low and have you deal with it which makes no sense to me i would much rather have the nut set way too low but if they set it too low then it, then they can't set it up from the factory without doing a shim job on it which i guess they're too lazy or dare i say too stupid to figure out how to do that because when your nut is too high, that creates all kinds of problems and issues that you have to deal with, which ultimately means now you're the one that has to grind the nut down to get it to where it works properly. And grinding down these nuts on locking trim systems is shockingly hard to do. Now, I've had a few people ask me if I would do a video on that, and as soon as I get another guitar with a nut too high, <laughs> I will gladly do that. But what I do is I take it, you gotta have a belt sander in order to do this. Now there are videos and I've seen things where people say you can lay a piece of sandpaper on the table and you move in a figure eight to sand it down and you can do that. Um, it'll take you about 4,629 days to do it that way because it doesn't regardless how cheap of a trim system you have on your guitar, this metal is still incredibly tough and you will spend weeks literally weeks sitting there doing this and then after about a week you'll go check it to realize that you've gotten absolutely nowhere so it's really hard to do it that way so the best thing to do is put it on a belt sander but even on a belt sander it does have its downside because it's nearly impossible to get it to sand equally across the uh the nut it's really really hard to do so but that's not a big deal that is fixable and that's what we're going to work on today. So this nut on this guitar, this is literally one of my favorite guitars in the world. It is one of my ugliest guitars in the world, but it's one of my favorite guitars. It plays phenomenal. This is my 1120 Ibanez PBZ, and it does have the EVO gold frets, which I absolutely love. Um, they have a hardness rating of about 375. Stainless steel is about 400. Nickel is about 350. Uh, these sit right in the middle, and I've been playing this guitar relentlessly for two years, and I have zero wear on it. So I'm really kind of digging the EVO gold frets. And I like the fact they're gold. They're very cool. But what I had to do when I bought this guitar, the nut was too high. And it just, no matter how much I worked on it, I just couldn't. I could get it set up, but when you were down here playing chords, it was just so hard because I never measured it, but I mean, it had to have been three millimeters tall. It was massive, the amount of clearance I had between the first fret and the string. And it would, you can get it set up, but when you're fretting down here, because the action is so high, it's always going to pull it just a touch on the sharp side. So what I did is I took this off and I went down to my buddy Rick's and uh, he's got a belt sander a uh, one of the big tabletop sanders and i put it on there and i ground the nut down myself now i did come back and do a setup on it but over time as i have tweaked and adjusted to get more where i want the setup and the action i have come to find out that this side of my nut the high e is too low and let me see if you can hear this got a shockingly irritating uh, amount of fret buzz in it and it's just this high E string what I have on the B is acceptable to me so I'm not too worried about that but there is a touch in the B so the rest of the guitar is set up very very well so I don't want to go in and start tweaking on the truss rod and moving my trim system here which I'm gonna do another video on that coming up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shim the nut to help alleviate 
that god awful sound. Sounds like a banjo with a mouth harp combined. So anyway, let's get started. All right, so what you're looking at here is my guitar. This is my Ibanez 1120 PBZ, like I said. And I absolutely love this guitar. Uh, this is one of my favorite guitars. But the problem I have is I've got this crazy amount of buzz in this string. Now this guitar has been set up and everything's been done. The problem here is here. It is at the nut. So what we're going to do, which way should I move this? Here, let's put it down here. What I'm going to do is we're going to fix this by shimming it. Now what we're going to do is I like using very teeny tiny shims and it's kind of hard to go wrong with good old Reynolds Wrap aluminum foil. This is what I use to shim all my nuts when they're out of whack. And the reason being is because aluminum foil as you well know, is crazy thin, crazy thin. And so we're gonna get this back up to spec. Now what you should have here, let me check and make sure I'm recording audio, and yes I am. What you should have here is 0.25 millimeters between the low E string and the fret wire, which means it's pretty much less than you can physically see. but. Right here, you can't see it on the camera course and there's no way I can make you see this. But when I push down here on my high E, there is, I'm gonna see if you can tell, I kinda doubt you're going to be able to on a camera, but there is very minimal movement right here. I mean minimal. But when I push down on this, there's literally none, which means this string is virtually sitting barely on the top of this fret, which causes that and that will not do so let's fix that so what we're going to do is we're going to, first we're going to turn on my light here now i did a video a while back and uh, i showed one of my little portable lights that i use for video production and this is and uh i've had a couple people comment and say dude that's a great idea i'm going to get me one of those and i think you can get those off amazon um i'll get one and i'll show you what i'm talking about be right back this is the little light I'm talking about. Uh, these are made by Hagibis or Pixel, which some company, probably in China, makes them, to be honest, and they just sell them under different... Oh, yeah, made in China. And they just sell them under different names. They're the same exact lights. But I use these uh, little ones for video production. But these also work out great for working on your guitar because they are crazy bright, and they're very small, and they put out a tremendous amount of light. Sorry about the camera. I got everything set on auto when I do these videos because I talk with my hands so much and they're crazy bright but they have all kinds of different colors and effects and stuff like that on it but I usually get just a little tripod and I'll set these on the little tripod so I can angle them you can usually get these off of Amazon for about 60 bucks why am I telling you this well just give me a minute here I use this one a lot too this is another one of my tube lights that I use for video production and again these things are phenomenal for working on guitars and let's see here now this is this is going to darken the video but these get insanely bright also and as you can tell they put out a pretty good amount of light and of course they have all those effects and stuff which you'll never use for this but when i'm working on guitars i'll set it on the end like this and shoot light across the table that so i can see what's going on just like this now this one in particular um I got this from b &H Photo. I got this on sale for 90 bucks, and you would not believe the uses we have for this thing. I use it in my garage. Uh, my wife will use it a lot of times when she doesn't have enough light to put on makeup. She'll set them up beside her, <laughs> use them to put on makeup. Uh, I use them for working on guitars. I use these for everything in the world because they just put out great light. So why am I telling you this? What does this have to do with the video? Because it brings me to the next point. If you're going to start working on guitars, make sure you have the stuff you need to work on guitars. Uh, and you always want good tools. You don't want to start working on your guitar with cheap tools because cheap tools are going to start stripping out bolts, rounding out heads and stuff like that. So that's never going to do you any good. So the point I'm making is spend the money, get some good lighting that you can throw up to see what you're doing and buy a couple of decent tools for the love of God. So on that note, let's do this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break this nut loose right here. We're going to pull the locks out of it. Now these are Craftsman... Um, 
Allen wrenches and they have the ball heads on them, which are really, really nice. I love using these things with the ball heads. They are absolutely worth their weight in gold. And the nice thing about the ball head is, I mean, you know, you have these, this side when you need a lot of leverage, but the ball head, you, can, you don't always have to go in at a straight angle because sometimes when you're getting into things, you got to come in at a bit of an angle and that ball head makes that much easier. But other than that, they're just really good also. And these are left over from our old motorcycle racing days, believe it or not. I've had these Allen wrenches for 25 years and they're still working fantastically. So we're gonna pull this off. See, it's not just a video about learning guitar stuff. You get to learn all kinds of stuff. Fun things about tools, fun things about lights, all kinds of things you would never think. And you also get to learn that since I really don't drink caffeine, the worst drink in the world is caffeine-free Diet Coke. This tastes like literally cold piss in a can. Ah, not refreshing whatsoever. But I'm not a big caffeine drinker, so you gotta drink something. I don't want all the sugar from regular soda, so we, there's, there is that issue. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna loosen these strings down. And we're gonna need to get these pretty loose because we're not gonna remove the strings, but we are going to remove the, um, the uh, nut, Jesus. A little bit of a brain fade there. So I've been watching these videos lately on um, making river tables and stuff. Cause getting ready, um, I love working with wood. <laughs> and, you can, and let's be very clear about that. I love working with wood that grows on trees. Let's just leave it. <laughs> and um, so we're uh, getting ready to start setting up the garage for the wood shop. And cause I love building things. And since I've gotten married, we haven't had a chance to do that. And so I've been watching a lot of these uh, videos on YouTube. You know, these guys making river tables, epoxy tables and stuff like that. That really fascinates me. And these couple of channels, uh, one of my things called Blacktail Studios, I think, and the other one's Bobby Builds or Robbie Builds or I don't know, Joe Bob Builds, some, something like that. And these guys seem to have a lot of opinions on music for being woodworkers. And it's pretty funny because I think it's Blacktail Studios. And I kind of agree with him. He thinks that, uh, what's that dude's name, The Boss? Bruce Springsteen is literally one of the most talentless and overrated people in the world. <laughs> and I actually kind of agree with this guy. <laughs> I think Bruce Springsteen is horrible, man. I cannot stand that dude. I cannot stand him. I don't like his music. I, I never understood why he got so big. I just, that one kind of baffled me a little bit. All right, moving on. So as you can see, we got a lot of slack here. So now we're gonna to start to remove the actual nut itself. So here again, I've got a very good screwdriver. This is a Mac screwdriver, and uh, which as you know, Mac makes fantastic tools. And when you get a screwdriver that has a really good head on it, it will bite into your uh, nuts, uh, your heads, I'm sorry. It'll bite into your screw heads much better and you have less likely of a, likely of a chance of it popping out and rounding out the inside. So if you're gonna work on guitars, it's definitely worth the time to buy a few good tools. You don't have to buy a lot. You don't need much to work on a guitar. Good set of Allen wrenches, couple of good screwdrivers, some good wire cutters, and that's really about all you need. You don't need much else. But with that being said, all right, we're gonna take this dude off. Now we're gonna pop these strings across so we can slide this out. And let's figure out what's happening here. I would say you can listen to me whistle while I work, but man, I can't whistle for piss. I'm terrible at it. Okay, let go. We've got two strings stuck together here. String number one, string number two. Now, as you can see, I've shimmed this before, and here is my aluminum foil here. And this little piece right here, I've got this folded twice. And hopefully you can see that. And this is the piece that goes on the high E. But I've also got this one here that has been folded over twice. This one's folded in half. This one's folded in half, then folded in half again. And this is what was on the high E side. So let's set these to make sure we have them on the correct sides, like this. 
Now here is the nut. Now you should be able, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but you can see the difference in the finish here. This is what I sanded down. And when you have a sander, when you're using a belt sander, it has a big metal plate like this, and this will be your sander and the, the uh, sandpaper turning around. And the best thing to do is you set this up against the plate, and it's very hard to do, but the best thing to do is when it's up against the plate is to try to hold it right in the center because the plate will keep it from going moving this way. But you want to try to hold it right in the center to try to get it as even as possible. But even at that, it's going to be impossible to get this to sand evenly on both sides. So don't even try. Th that, that's a one in a billion shot you're actually going to get that correct. So I would not even worry about that. And because we're going to shim it, it's not that big of a deal. But when I got this, like I said, this was extremely high here. And you have two options at this point. You can either address this or you can address this. One of the two has to be addressed. Now, back in the day, back in, back in, back in yonder, back when I was just a, a wee tadpole, you actually could buy these in different heights. Uh, but I guess that's a thing of the past because I cannot find them in different heights anymore. It's kind of a one size fits all. So with that being said, that means that this has to be routed absolutely perfectly. Now, the reason I did not want to go this route and route this is because you can route this. Granted, get a router, remove some of the wood. And if it goes too low, you can shim it back up. But here's the difference, and this is why I did not go that route. If something goes wrong and I screw this up, let's say my router bit breaks in the middle or I got a dull spot in it I don't know of and it starts chipping away at my fretboard, it is a hell of a lot more expensive to replace this fretboard than it is this nut. So that's why I went this route. My personal opinion, never, ever, never route your fretboard. Once you have it, and if it's too high, start working on this. All right, with that being said, let's get the show on the road here. So we're going, we do know that this is the piece. This has been folded over and folded over again for the high side. This piece has been folded once for the low side and it works great. So we're not worried about this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our nut back in, now that I see, because I couldn't remember how many shims I had under this, so I wanted to take it off and kind of show you all it's not that big a deal to get this off, because you don't glue them or anything. So let's go ahead and separate these strings. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working this back under. So, and you gotta pull up a string, move it over, put on a string, move it over, put on a string, and you just gotta keep cycling it you keep moving it and going over it string by string. Hopefully you can see this without my hand being in the way. Move it over a little more, go over string by string. And then here's the B string coming on. Move the E string over. And now we have our high E coming on right here. Now I'm gonna loosen these up just a little more. So I'm gonna need some room to get under this. Everything else is pretty loose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and stick our shim for our high E, for our low E. We're gonna go ahead and put this one back in. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lift this up and we're gonna slide this aluminum foil. We're gonna slide it right under there. We're gonna move it down. And what we're just looking to see is that it's completely under, but right at the edge. We don't want it sticking out, and we don't want it too far into the middle either. So I'm going to look at this, and that's pretty good. I've got it right at the edge, and I've got it sticking in. We're sticking out right here just a little bit on the top. So I'm going to lift this up and slide that down a little bit. There we go. So now we've got that shim in. Okay, so now we've got the low E shim here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of aluminum foil. I'm going to look at what we got here because I don't want it to be so long that it sticks out. 
and I'm just going to tear it. Make sure that we're good. And that's pretty good. I'm going to tear it just a hair more. And I mean a little bit. I'm going to nip away at it. Actually, we are going to pull out the trusty blade. And we're just going to cut. that off. Let's put the trusty blade back. Now what we're going to do here is I'm going to look and see I know I need it folded in half and in half. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it one time. Hopefully you can see all this what's going on without me having to zoom in. I'm going to fold it one time put a little crease in it. I'm going to fold it again a little crease in it and you can see how incredibly thin you probably can't even see it it's so thin that actually is because we're making very minute very minor movements is what we're making and then we're going to fold it again Which literally, as you know, every time we fold it, it doubles the thickness. So here is our original shim, right here. And you can tell this is literally hardly nothing as far as the width goes. So I'm going to cut this a little shorter, because as you know, it's nearly impossible to get these folds correct. So I'm going to cut this a little shorter. Mm -mm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it up here and see the length of it. So like I said, I don't want this sticking out on my guitars. And it is sticking out a little bit, so I'm going to trim it a little more. Now we're going to take this, this little shim right here, and what I'm going to do, because I'm already at four, and I know that my old one was at four, and I need to come up just a little bit. Now, like I said, you can see how thin these are. I mean, they're shockingly thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, this shim here, and I'm going to fold it one more time, which will again double my thickness. And this is going to be the new shim I am going to put under here. So I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to slide it under and I'm going to park it all the way against the uh, where it's routed in the fretboard. Set that down. We're going to line that up. And then let's put our screws back in and see if this is enough. Because right now, I know I have three folds on it. And when we put this in, do not over tighten these. These do not have to be tight. Just put them in and snug them in. Just give it a little, just a little snug. That's it. All right, and now I don't have my string winder with me, but now we're gonna tune this up. So we're gonna plug in our tuner. Tuner is on, so let's start bringing all this back into tune now. All right, so now we've got the guitar back in tune. And I've got my regular shim that I put in on this side. I left that one in there, but what I did is I took this one because I knew I'd taken a piece of aluminum foil. I had folded it and folded it. Now, what I did, because I knew that one wasn't high enough, so I folded it one more time, which doubled the thickness again. Now, like I said, you're not gonna be able to see it here, but I actually now have a little bit of movement right here. 
over my E string. And if you can hear it, I've gotten rid of that fret buzz that was irritating the living hell out of me right here on this first fret. Now, I do have some movement here. And what I'm gonna do, that may actually be a little more than I want. I do not know yet. It's about the same that I have all the way across. But I do like these to be literally just barely lifting off of the string. So if I get to a point where I think this may be a touch too high, what I'll do is I'll get another piece of aluminum foil and I'll fold it in half and fold it in half. That was our original one. Then I will grab another little piece and I will fold it in half once and stick it on top of the other shim, which will essentially remove 25% of our height from here. Because what you want, like I said, what you want is 0.25 millimeters under this first fret, which is a very minimal, a very small amount of play to get under here. So you're, you want to keep this really, really close the best that you can. <clears throat> All right, so now we've got that part done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna unplug this guitar. Oh, watch out, because this knife is crazy sharp. We're gonna unplug this jack out of the bag. And we're gonna go ahead and put our locks back in. And then we're gonna test it one more time just to make sure. And you probably, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but if you took the locks out, chances are you know how to put them back in. So you really don't have to see this part. And there again, we're gonna take our Allen wrench. When we tighten these up, we're just gonna snug them. Just a little snug. There's no reason to tighten them up. Right when it seats, turn it, and you can feel it seat. Then just give it a little, just a little push. No reason to over tighten them. Now listen to the difference. And that eliminated that irritating fret buzz I had at the first fret. And that is the easiest way to fix this. So if, you ha if you're having problems where you're having a lot of fret buzz here at the first fret, don't just jump in and start cranking on your truss rod because that may not be the answer. You gotta remember, a guitar setup revolves multiple things. And one thing you should always do is when you're doing a, a proper guitar setup, always start with new strings because that makes a huge difference. If you got rusted crap, if your strings are blacker than your soul, than your black heart, then chances are you need to replace them. So always start with new strings. Because you gotta remember, a guitar setup consists really of three things. It consists of the neck truss rod adjustment, the bridge, and the nut. And of course, new strings. Those are the things it takes to set up a guitar correctly. You don't grab a guitar and just start cranking on the truss rod thinking, well, this is gonna solve all my issues because chances are it won't. To do a setup correctly, you have to have these three things in balance. So that is how you do this. That is how you take care of this nut issue right there. And I hope that uh, uh, that solves the issues. I've had a lot of people ask me about it. So um, I wanted to go ahead and do one so you could see what it was. And as you can see, real quick, there's a chandelier above me that I just wanted to hit with uh, the top of my string tree. So I'd rather break the chandelier than uh, mess up my guitar. <laughs> but as you can, I don't know if you can see it, but as you can see here, if this will focus, you cannot see those shims whatsoever on the guitar. They are tucked in there nice and tight, so it is not an issue to do that. And the guitar will play absolutely fantastic. Now, before we leave, one thing you may have to do, because we have physically changed the geometry of the guitar. Since we've done that, after you retune, you may have to reset the intonation on a couple of these strings. Now, I know the intonation is not gonna come out on my E, A, and D, because this was the shim I already had under it, but I did raise it on the high E side. So my intonation may pop out on this, I'm gonna have to check that. But I do have another video on setting the intonation on this very bridge. And so that should wrap that up. Um, I'm gonna do another video, one more video on this. I'm actually gonna do it on the Ibanez Zero system. 
Uh, just a couple of questions, a couple of things people have asked me about. So we're just going to run over that in a video that will be coming up. So on that note, we're going to wrap it up right there. And like the great Sammy Hagar says, if you miss a beat, you lose the rhythm and nothing falls into place. And I'm going to say this again for all my YouTube friends out there. Quit sending your guitar to other people to have it worked on. At the end of the day, nobody knows what you like except you on how you play a guitar. You can explain it to somebody all you want, but they're never going to get it perfect. Only you can do that. The reason I'm saying that is because the best thing you can do for yourself is kind of like guitar lessons. You can take all the lessons you want, but unless you practice your ass off, you're never going to get anywhere. Same thing when it comes to working on a guitar. You can keep sending it to somebody and pay him two, three, four hundred dollars, and it amazes me. My buddy Rick, who owns a music store, people literally pay him to change strings on a guitar, and I'm like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Who? I mean, get a clue, man. The more you work on your guitar, the best thing you can do is figure out how to do it yourself, and the more you work on it, the better you're going to get. The best thing to do is buy a cheap little guitar, uh, like my little Wolfgang Standard. Um, I bought that one used for 400 bucks. That is a great guitar to learn how to do these things on. You can't break it, so don't worry. Work on your own stuff. Trust me, in the end, it will serve you worlds of good. I do have multiple videos up on how to do certain things on guitars. And if you have anything that you need to know, just drop me a line and I will gladly answer it. So we're going to wrap it up right there. Wanted to get that one knocked out and out of the way. So until the next video, my friends, rock on.